Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. So I just finished my video recording of the explanation of the law of cosines method for doing the direct landing calculation. So now I'm going to record uh, several attempts at the direct landing using that calculation just to uh, put it to the test and let's see how it does. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And so let's go ahead and review our flight record. So we've done 11 flights so far. And we've had those three successes, that was uh, 6, 7, and 8. And then uh, 9, 10, and 11 were failures. And our best one was 325. Now I'm not saying that I'll have a, a new best flight or anything like that. I'm just saying we're, what, we're going, what I'm going for here is consistency and accuracy and repeatability. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's uh, skip the intro just for the sake of time. Wow, that was loud. Immediately kill the engine, so for this part of the flight, nothing's going to change. So kill or kill the rotation, open the retro doors, uh, left shift escape, right shift escape, and immediately, like before, we want to get into uh, burn time, or not burn time, but interplanetary MFD right away, bring up our base approach program, target Brighton Beach, and we want to have more information, so we're going to go to the old program, and as we saw in the video, we know that the altitude is negative 2566. And the angle here, again, I'm still working on that a little bit. But I think negative 0.3 has been working pretty well, so let's go with that. And we had 57 minutes or so, plus a little bit on this flight, so I always like to keep that in mind when setting up my time. I'm going to start with uh, three. Th I'm going to start with 3100, and I'm going to start working backwards from there because I feel like that's cutting it too close. So that gives me a DV of 208. 3000 will be 184, so that's nice to know that we can actually have more time and have a lower DV, 2900, so that's also nice. That's only a difference of 3 DV, I'll take it. 2800, so now things are going up significantly. So 2900 is what we're going to fly. So without any further messing about, let's burn that maneuver. And let's go ahead and... Uh, switch over here and bring up our calculator um, which I don't have I'll have to uh, we'll, we'll look at this calculator in a minute but um, right, let me see if I can find my log sheet really quick okay yeah there it is all right so while that's burning let's go ahead and create a new flight so this is flight 12 we did 2900 again and we did that one again. Now we're not going to worry about our 60-70% because we're going to be using a calculation, but uh, we'll, maybe we'll do a comparison actually. Alright, so let's go ahead and switch back over here. Now the pressure's off for getting things done because once that burn's done, now we have time to think. So let's, uh, let, well, let's first of all, let's uh, you know put in our put in our information for the calculation. So again, the re-entry velocity is given here, so we need that. So let's uh, plug that into burn time calculator. So there's burn time. So we're going to go dv, and you may be wondering, well, should I? Can I do it now, or should I wait till I'm down to 500 uh, kilometers or something like that? I find it doesn't matter enough to bother, so I, I'm just going to do it now. It will change, but the difference it's going to make in terms of when you begin the burn is is irrelevant um, at least in my experimentation it, it literally doesn't even make the difference of one kilometer so I'm just going to plug the data in now so my REV is 2876 so that tells me I need 157,572 meters so let me plug that in to my calculation here uh, 157 572. Now the next thing I need to know is the re-entry angle and I can get that from burn time calculator uh, or from interplanetary MFD and for this particular flight it's 39.874 degrees 39.874 degrees so let's plug that in 39.874 degrees and thanks to the magic of spreadsheets we have an answer without having to go through that Equi uh, without having to go through that calculation and our answer is I hope it shows up let me maybe zoom in a bit our answer is our burn distance is 102 uh, 
0.4 kilometers. And again, if we if we started the burn at that point, we would smack into the ground. If we add 4%, and I'm at 4% is a bit not sure how, you know, that's just a number I've been using, which in this case adds about 4 kilometers. So we're saying about 106 0.5 kilometers. I might even start a little bit sooner than that. Again, I, I'm a little more conservative, um, but let's keep that in mind. So I'm just going to round it up. I'm going to say 107 kilometers is when we're going to begin the burn for this flight. So I'm going to put that into this spreadsheet. I'm going to have to zoom back out. So for this flight, we're going to start the burn at 107,000 meters. But I, I am curious to see you know, with this old calculation system that I was doing, how does that compare? You know, what, what what will this give me compared to that number? So let's find that out as well, as long as we're at it. But ultimately, this is what we're going to use. All right, so let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Let's go into the retrograde position. And so we're done here. We don't need this anymore. So let's bring up our generic camera. And if I go previous a couple of times, I'll get my back camera that I want. A little bit of time warp to speed up the autopilot so it settles into position. Come out of time warp, turn that off, hit kill, rotate once or twice. And now we're going to warp time forward down to 400 kilometers so that we can compare what we're doing here with the new method that we're about to try. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, get down to that point. Okay, we're getting close-ish, so we'll go down to 100. Now down to 10, and yeah, maybe back to 100, okay. And let's come out of time warp, let's hit retrograde again. Not that it has any bearing on what we're doing here, but just to get that locked in while I'm thinking about it. A little bit of time warp to speed that up and get us closer to that 400 kilometer mark. Come out of time warp and down to 0 0.1 and immediately plug in our vertical speed first, it looks like we're doing, which is 2003 in this case and then pause okay so that gives us uh, 76,840 meters so let's switch over here and plug that in 76,840 meters and now let's figure out what our GS would be so let's switch back to here unpause plug in our GS which is 2686 Give that a second, and then Control P for pause. So that's going to give us 137,597 meters. 137,597 meters. Now we're going to copy down our equations. And according to, so, so our range in this flight is, again, it's pretty narrow. So honestly, this method would probably work based on what we've seen before. Although in this case it didn't, but well, in this case it didn't work, but we also remember our velocities were a lot higher. So any, at any rate, if we did 60%, we would be doing the burn according to this method at 113 kilometers. Or if we did 50%, we'd be bang on with the number that we got by using the law of cosines. So that's interesting to note. And I do remember on a couple of those flights saying that I would actually prefer to get closer to 50% because it seemed like I was doing the burn too early. So that's interesting to note that these are in agreement. Uh, but that's a bit of a fluke, you know, from one flight to the next. But at any rate, we're going to do our burn according to the law of cosines, not according to what we're seeing here. I just wanted to compare and see how, how they would and see how they would compare. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here. And let's, uh, let's get this burn underway pretty soon. So let's unpause, let's go back to real time, and let's get our vertical speed set, and we're going to begin the burn at 107 kilometers. Go ahead and get this dialed in to something like that. And we are in retrograde, we do have the retro doors open, landing gears currently up. Oh, one thing we have not done, and we still have a little bit of time to do it, GPS VTOL, go to memory, get and then over to comnav and i'm just going to dial in the landing pad only which is 116 no 132 132 uh, 20 but i'm going to put in 15 for now because i'm not close enough and for whatever reason 
if I put in the actual frequency now, it doesn't work. And I have to go off frequency and back on. So if I just start having it off frequency, it just saves me a step. Um, all right, so we're going to have GPS VTOL up on this side for now. And we have a little bit to go here, so I'm going to take a sip of water. That way we can be hydrated. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and warp time before we get closer to that 107 kilometer mark. All right, come out of time warp. And retrogrades on, everything's ready to go. So we're getting ready to engage the full power of the main engines at 107 kilometers. Let's see how we do. Okay, coming up on the burn in just a couple of seconds here and burning full power of the main. Lock that in. And we'll go ahead and warp time forward to get through that a little bit quicker. Ground rush. Okay, come out of time warp. We're at seven kilometers. I think we're going to be okay on our speed here. I don't think we're going to hit the ground, I mean. And kill the engines, go level, and we're in rotation. So let's actually go to our down cam. Altitude is okay. Where we are falling, keep that in mind. We have six, almost seven minutes left. Got all the time in the world. Let's go ahead and rotate around because technically we are moving away from the base at the moment, and I like that. I like to be moving straight forward. Okay. Okay. Bit of forward translation. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hover hold because I'm panicking. Using a bit of translation. Okay, we have plenty of delta V. Uh, we got a bit to go down, so I'm going to increase my descent rate. Go ahead and put down the landing gear now. Rotation. Let's go ahead and rotate around. I, again, I just psychologically I like to have that directly in front of me. Not that it really matters. All right. Translation. Now we can start using some of our our. RCS that we have left over and what I'm doing is I'm holding the number two just to slow down my descent by just the smallest amount just to use up some of that fuel and I'm starting to slow down my increase my descent rate. I did not mean to press that button. That super sucks. And I accidentally forgot to take out all the hover, so that's a bit of a fumble on my part. Rotate translation. So we're almost over the center of the pad. We can pretty much drop straight down. So and hover engines are off all the time in the world, plenty of fuel, and let me just go ahead and set this for like a meter, and then when we're about ready to touch down, we'll engage the hover. Right now, we just want to fall as fast as we can. Uh, we did put the landing gear down. Yes, we did. Okay. Rotation translation. 1,000. Okay, I heard the 1,000 call out. Go ahead and start holding a little bit because I'm panicking. Go ahead and turn that off, take out all the hover. Plenty of time left, and if I hadn't fumbled, this would probably be my best result. It may still be my best result, but it's unfortunate that I fumbled. Okay, go ahead and engage now. Go ahead and drop a little bit faster. I think we're okay. And go with that. Now we'll just concentrate on... Okay, so we're 
Turkey. So our horizontal speed's mostly zero. Let me go ahead and shut this off. And we have plenty of fuel 20. left. And yeah, if I hadn't messed this, if I hadn't fumbled the uh, the hover, I think this would have been the best result. Ten. Okay, maybe slow things down a bit more. Get ready to turn this off. Off and brakes. All right. <laughs> All right, I don't know if that's the best. It, I think it most definitely would have been if I hadn't messed up that hover. Let's check it out. So three minutes and 17 seconds remaining, that's 180 plus 17, 197. Did I do that right? 12 attempts, 325 seconds. So I think we had one landing that was a bit better than that. Again, if I hadn't messed up the hover there, I think that would have been the best. Anyway, so that's one success. Let's go ahead and log that success. And success. And let me put a star next to it. And the star just means that we used the uh, the law of cosine method versus this spreadsheet. The only reason I plugged the numbers into the spreadsheet this time was just for the sake of comparison. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the overlay. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed watching this, uh, hit the like button. We're gonna do several of these so that we can put this uh, new calculation system to to a uh, you know to a to a pretty thorough test. We don't just want to have one success and say, look, that's the best method. Period. End of story. We we need to verify over a sample size of you know uh, quite a few flights. All right. I'll see you in the next video.